Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Halo Wars. Today, we're doing something a little bit different than what I normally do, and that is showing a 1v1 I did. This is, I went random all, uh, we're against a Prophet of Regret. Um, I never all normally units. do 1v1s yeah. just because they're incredibly sweaty. And I like to take my time, I like to try different strategies, especially with a game where you, you don't have that many units and there's not many maps, if we're honest. I guess 1v1 has some really unique ones I've never used before. But this is a classic, you know, it's the Halo, it's the Blood Gulch, it's the... Um, units. I don't know. I can't remember what it was in Halo 1. <laughs> but I unfortunately, I got Forge. Um, and I had heard that actually going barracks first is, is the best thing to do. And I thought, you know what? I, I never play 1v1s. Let's give it a shot. Let's see. I mean, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out and we lose. <laughs> you know, at least I've learned not to do that. Um, so, and I think the thing is... I did go for an extra Warthog. So that takes basically two extra flamethrowers away. So instead of three, I have... Uh, sorry, instead of five, I have three. <laughs> sorry, I, it's hard concentrating. And I also notice... At this point, I notice I'm actually uh, Forge because I think I realize... Oh, wait, I can't make another supply pad because it costs so much. Oh, God. I'm going to have to heavily rely on my Warthogs here. Um, so the main reason why we are casting this... Or not casting, I suppose. I, I, I'm... You know, recording over Local this units. is because this opponent I have a Enemy rematch engagement. with, and let's Local say things units. get a little bit heated on his end. Local he's uh, units. he's Enemy not he's engagement. not very happy with me for multiple reasons. We'll find out. Local units. I mean, I, I you know it's a one v one, and especially Halo is known for being somewhat toxic. <laughs> and Halo Wars back in the day definitely was. Uh, it was probably a good job on the 360 that you couldn't chat, you couldn't do voice uh, either because, oh, uh, unfortunately this is on Steam, so you can type, and yeah, that leads to a lot of toxicity. I mean, any competitive game has it. So I decided to go for my side hooks because this game has two reactors, two supply pads, which basically act as one and a half heavy supply pads, I think, or something like that. So they're really worth getting. Um, and I know that in this matchup, I can get the eco boom if he allows me to. And because UNSC is just stronger in general than the Covenant, uh, as long as I'm allowed to get into the late game, I've probably won this. So at this point, I'm, I'm kind of expecting a rush from him. And anybody who plays Halo Wars should probably expect the Covenant to come straight over to your base. So I send one Warthog uh, to go have a scout to see what he's doing. And I see Jackals. So he's definitely taking his hooks at the side. I don't know which side. But, I mean, if I was a Covenant taking both reactors first, um, you know, you could upgrade to, uh, like, Supreme Gauntlet Jackals. You could go for even a, a, a good tactic, Local which would units. be the Locust, which are the building destroyers, and you get high range. Um, if you did that, I would probably switch to Spartans Local to units. try and hijack some. But at this point, I realize that, like, I have no reactor. I, I'm really trying to amass resources here with my flamethrowers. And his ghost comes around to have a little peek to see what I'm doing. He sees, he probably sees infantry and is like, oh, okay. So I'm probably going to need jackals then. But this this kind of matchup, I think in competitive, it's usually Brute Chieftain versus Anders. Anders because of the cheap tech and the uh, Brute Chieftain just because it's stronger with the, the brutes it makes. The, uh, it, like, it has way more health than the Prophet, and the Arbiter's, I guess, good for Warthogs. But, yeah, I'd lose two flamethrowers there, because they were basically dead from marching backwards and forwards from the other base. Because <laughs> it has two turrets, apparently. So, I see that he has his left side, so I'm a bit worried he's going to come and take my... Yeah, and there it is, straight away. I'm just looking at him up, and here he comes to ruin my day! Um, but... You know, unupgraded jackals, unupgraded, um, yeah, I try, I try and ram there and I just missed it. Like, bollocks. <laughs> uh, so unupgraded gauntlet, unupgraded profit. So things are, things are looking well. And at this point I realized, well, at least I have one reactor so I can instantly make tanks, right? That's probably, I, I, I went into this not knowing what I was going to go for. But knowing that I needed to take the hooks. And if I, you know, if I can get both of the reactors, and that, that was some good micromanaging from the ghost there to avoid me. 
I don't know if he did units. that deliberately or if he just, you know, all units and then clicked at my base, which is probably what happened, uh, which sent the uh, ghost over there. So that gives me a little heads up that he's probably coming over if the ghost is coming over for no reason, except for maybe scout, I suppose. But I'm very aware he's coming over. That's why I've locked my base. And I don't want one tank out for it to instantly be beamed down. And, you know, I need to amass my numbers. He's basically got map control at this point. I'm going to send some flamethrowers to maybe take the other one. But at, at this point, Flashback. I've literally Research. got one reactor. He's got two extra supplies and another reactor. So I am heavily on the back foot. And luckily, because I'm Forge, I got, you know, the eco at the start with the instant heavy supply pad. So that's actually going to really help me out here. I feel like, especially with this matchup, it was I would have been better with Anders. But obviously, random all. Uh, I, I, that's the only thing I play because at least that way we, you learn how to play different things. Uh, I find when you go up against someone who picks a character, they have a strategy, especially in a 1v1. So that's why I was a bit worried about this guy because he was like Prophet, which is interesting because Prophet's not something I would have thought he would have picked. Uh, so I'm like, okay, let's go over. We're about to get another tank out and local units. I just want these hooks, these side hooks. And this actually becomes part of his strategy. Uh, units. for the next game as well. He decides, you know what? Hooks, hooks are the way to go. We play on a different map, don't worry. Local Not going to be boring. So his little uh, little baby prophet as Turner puts it. Um, he's another caster Local who does units. Halo Wars. We're, we're far and few between... Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, there's something about it. I like that it's not too complicated. Unlike, you know, Age of Empires. Age of Empires I find, or Age of Empires 2, um, I love, but I get, I get too... Confused. My little monkey brain can't handle all the options I can do. <laughs> can't multitask. I think Halo Wars is the perfect amount of complicated for me. Where I can micro, I can focus on, you know, that unit beats that, rather than, you know, 20 or 30 different unique civilizations. I'd love that. In fact, I have checked out the mod overhaul, the leader overhaul mod, and I, I can't wait. I'm going to do a video on that because that is so fun. Um, so, yeah, he's he takes a long time to take my flamethrowers out, which is interesting, but... Uh, I've got... We're basically trading hooks, except units. it's kind of worse for me because I'm getting resources when I kind of didn't really need them. Um, and I've lost my reactor, so I'm about to, sorry. And with that, it's going to stop units. my production of tanks. But I'm hopefully going to take him out of this one and trade. So I'm a bit worried about what he's doing. If he's amassing banshees, um, then I could Local be screwed units. here. But at the same time, I think I've I've done. And there we go. I've done well. Oh, there he goes. Woo! He's just flying. Uh, I've done well. Um, you know, scouting him, finding out what he's doing. So we'll, we'll find out. At this moment, I only have the supply hook. And I realise I'm actually quite close to a pop limit here. Local units. And I I think only only the flamers have the upgrade. They've got the flashbang, which is really going to help me out here. Um, I'm expecting beam rifle to come through on these jackals because that will just make taking these things so much harder. And really, the tactic I'm thinking of uh, is just amass tanks, amass flamers. Because, uh, you know, tanks are great against most things. Even a lot of banshees, they can, you know, machine gun them down if there's enough of them. But if I'm against a full pop banshees, and this is the point now, I'm like, oh god, wait. I don't know, he could be switching to something. And then I see, oh my god, hunters! Right, okay. I mean, not a bad choice, I suppose. They've even got Spirit Link or whatever it's Spirit Bond. And I'm like, oh god, I need that reactor. I need that reactor. I, I could get a uh, canister shell. Come on. Come on, take the reactor. Take the reactor. Come on. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Right, so now the big problem arises. I need to hold my factory until, or is it called factory? Vehicle depot. I need to hold it until canister shell is unlocked. So he's he's committing to probably jackals and hunters. Not a bad strategy. If it was me, I probably would have went for Banshees, just knowing that if I can keep the UNSC player off the reactors, it's going to be a hard time for him to get Wolverines to counter me. So I, I see I have three tanks. We're starting to get Oxide tank as well, so I'm fully committing to the flamethrowers. I never normally get that, but... With him just getting loads of infantry, including the hunters, um, I think that's just going to be better. I would have liked to have gotten the um, the adrenaline 
upgrade for, for them, but I, I'm not going to destroy a supply pad for that. I need as many supplies as I've got. And luckily, I have so many extra supplies here that it's really going to help me. So there we go. Just queuing up as many flamers as I can because I know there's going to be a lot of hunters. And a flamer can stun an entire uh, like squad of hunters. And that's going to be really good. Uh, basically, flamers need to take out the hunters and tanks need to take out the jackals. So there's two options here. I could go for uh, the defense. Or I could go for a counter push and force him away, leaving his hunters and jackals undefended. So I try and flame him, but they just do nothing. Uh, I go for an expensive um, copper bomb just because I have the resources and it kills two of them. So that's a, that's a win. That's like basically 600 resources for 500. And there we go. I lost the vehicle depot, but luckily I got the canister shell off. So that's not so bad. And now it's a case of I probably should have went for turrets. Probably should have. But my, my purpose here is just to try and force him to come back. So, uh, best thing to do is to stop his production of uh, hunters or anything. He's only got one haul and no extra base at this point. So, there you go. He can't make anything more. So, whatever's at my base now is going to stay there. Uh, I decided not to go for the turrets because really that's not going to put too much pressure on and time is of the essence. So we're, we're now we're focusing down his supplies. He has two of the hooks, uh, which is good. You know, I thought at one point I would have lost all of the hooks. So quickly, we're, he's, he's definitely trying to stop me getting anything else. So we're, he's going to take down my barracks. But I'm going to keep on making buildings because I have the resources. I don't care if he beams it down. Uh, I'm going to make him waste his resources to do that. And there we go. That's two supply pads on a hog on. A third supply pad falls. So he's down to two supply pads on the temple. And we're, we're kind of even. And at this point, I'm thinking, I, should I have just been attacking the base? But I don't think that was the, the, the good call. I think I, I made the right call here going for the supply pads. And uh, now I'm only down to two. And I'm going to unlock to see what I actually made. And I'm so desperate now. I'm going for warthogs. And there we go. We see the prophet come back. And I'm like, okay, get my tanks out of there. He's got ages because he's so slow. He can't rage over like the Arbiter does. He's going to have to slowly wheel himself over to the other side. A bit worried about this tank. It's on such low health. I think about going for another carpet, but it's not recharged yet. Um, and again, he has not upgraded his jackals. So I'm, I'm a bit worried about the tank. And then I realize I have a heal. I'm like, you idiot. Of course. I can't. You know, instead of making another vehicle depot, getting another reactor... I could just heal this one and basically have an extra uh, tank. So that's great. So Enemy they're going to stay here and recover, knowing I don't need to worry about the profit because it's going to take him ages to get back, even if he goes through the teleporter, which I don't think he does, actually. Um, and barracks luckily, complete. I get my barracks up and a turret. Oh, no, not a turret. Never mind. I get my barracks up, so that's going to give my base even more life. Ooh, and then I decided to go for turrets. I think that I, I thought that that was a turret completed message. I'm like, oh yeah, I should have been getting those. And he's starting to retreat, which is brilliant. Um, I, I got warthogs because I have so many supplies that I'm thinking, oh, well, I could at least maybe get gunner, ram over some jackals, just anything to make my resources work for myself here. Um, and I get so unlucky with this. You, you'll see if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. I try and micro this. So first canister shell does hit. Second canister shell... Oh, they both hit. Okay, maybe it's the next time. I'm pretty sure I do three cannies on them and they all bounce off. And I'm like, you kidding me? <laughs> what the chances of that? So here we go. I'm like, you know what? I've got some scouting, so that's good. But then I see he's going for his hooks again. When really, he should have been coming straight back over here to keep the pressure on. Like, I've only got three buildings. I mean, I do have a lot of resources just because when I do get a pad up, it's a heavy one. But I think he's just admitting defeat on these troops here. He's just, he's just saying they're gone. Um, I'm a bit worried about losing the tanks because I, I can't make them right now. So if I can, I'm like, here we go. Canister shell. Die. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two of the boats. Are you freaking kidding me? Just anything just to try and kill them as quickly as possible. So I have kept my three tanks with canister shell. And we drop, we drop, we drop, we drop a tactical heal. Uh, which heals my tanks and the base because I need that base heal because I don't know how much pressure he's going to uh, put onto me now. So I have no hooks now. He's took he's taken me out of all the hooks almost in that one as well. I feel like he, he has a lot of resources. I don't know. I feel like he has. He's had the hooks for longer than me. And I haven't really, you know, he's he destroyed my 
base quicker than I destroyed his. So he's, he should pair. have the... Complete. I mean, there you go. He spent 700 resources on his uh, profit to upgrade Local it. Units. And fair enough, because he, he loves his profit, apparently. He doesn't want to do anything without it. So here we go. Oxide tank against some jackals. Uh, if they were beam rifle, I might have been a bit more worried. Um, they get a bit of stage fright there. They don't they don't hit straight away, but we stun them. And then I think I do an all unit here all by accident. Units. Yeah. So that flamethrower is like, no, bye. I'm like, no, damn it. I need you. Come back. So I think a tactic you can do with the UNSC is something called a down tech. Down tech canny. So you basically get three separate reactors. Um, you upgrade the canister shell and then you delete one of the reactors. Or you just have two reactors, upgrade one of them to uh, a double reactor and then get canny and delete the spare reactor. And I've, I kind of did that here except for, you know, with the hooks. And this map allows you so many options in strategies. And it's one of the reasons why it's one of the most popular maps to do. It's also an easy one to cheese on though. Enemy and I see that. Oh, I'm like, okay, but you know, at least we won't die there because I got lots of upgrades. So this is a heavily fortified one. He's got all of the uh, all the things here, and I've got one of my flamers is basically already dead before the the fighting's even begun. And unfortunately, he wasted his flashbang on the other one, but we take the jackal out here. So he's only got two hooks, I think now. No, he's only got one hook. Yeah, and there we go. He has, he's only got one extra reactor. And I'm, I'm worried that he will eventually go for Banshees and me investing into, I'm like, oh God, run, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, yes. <laughs> just enough time. I mean, the only thing that it helps me do is uh, just get some extra resources. And now I've got so many, I'm thinking, hold on, with the tanks I've got, why don't I go for Spartans? I mean, I'm not Anders, so I don't get the cheap, uh, the cheap upgrades for them. But at the same time, I have so many resources that I might as well be on because I can just play around with them all. So I've got, I've luckily, I've got three uh, tanks to put the Spartans into and I'm making more. So I'm feeling a bit more confident now. Um, again, this is something you don't want to happen when you're the Covenant is just to let the UNSC player boom. And because I'm Forge, it really does help uh, having those heavy supply pads and stuff. So there we go. Boom, a three star. And I'm starting to feel good now. I've got my flamers coming around to his base. I feel like he's going to drop in units. So they may just be hanging around the teleporter. So I'm going to see if I can snipe any of those. And there he is again, ready to repeat what he did last time, thinking I will not have learned my lesson. Uh, and then I realized that I, I'm one pop off getting another tank. So I think I send in a Warthog just to ram the Prophet, just so I know he'll kill it. And unfortunately, there are no units just waiting at the teleporter. So I try and force him to come back just by burning the shield. And then I realize, oh, nope, he's not coming back. He's fully committed to the hunters. So I'm just going to run back. But I, the strategy I went to when he did this was to counter push. So I decided to do exactly that. Now, he went a bit clever. He did give himself a shield. But this time, he gave himself a shield. I decided to get turrets. Knowing that a lot of infantry is coming, I start to upgrade them to anti-infantry. And then I've got so many resources that I start to think to myself, okay, let's say we, we defeat this push. How, what's the next step? And I'm like, let's get a second base. So I can get this base because then he's going to, you know, his, uh, his concentration is going to be split between this base and my uh, expo. So we have full pop Spartan canny tanks with chain guns. So they've got four star, five stars even, I think. Um, and... Oh, yep. And he's Enemy now engagement. he's he's Turret really, complete. really in a in a pickle because he has to think Local about units. either pushing on this base or coming back to defend his base. And, you know, those tanks, you don't want to mess with canny tanks Four Spartan canny tanks. And here he is. So my idea is, right, let's force him to teleport back. When he teleports back, we'll canister him. So I'm just waiting here, waiting for him to come back. And yep, he's got one star. He's going to want to save it. He does teleport back and instantly gone. And he resigns right there. He's like, oh, okay. I'm like, okay, great. And then as soon as I come back, he gives a lovely, uh, lovely remark there in the corner. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and this is the toxicity. I'm like, what? But why though? <laughs> oh, 
and he instantly changes to uh, chasms for the next fight, and he wants to go. So I'm thinking he he's got a strategy on this one, and it's all about the hooks, isn't it? Like that's what he wants to do. And again, he's like, yeah. and I'm like, well, you can't say that if you've just <laughs> lost to me. <laughs> but are you lost to me? <laughs> so like, you know what? I, I at this point. The heat gets to me. I'm thinking, oh, do I do I trash talk a little bit? Do I give him a bit like, oh, well, you must be pretty terrible. Eh? Uh, but I decide not to because if I lose this, then I'm screwed. And he'll just he'll just rub it in my face, be like, haha, see you do suck. Um, so because I'm a covey, I decide to go for temple first. Uh, I think I quickly checked there to see what I am, and I'm a prophet. So pretty much, if I beat him now. Yeah, I'm saying you must be worse than that, man, eh? <laughs> so, at this point, if I beat him as Prophet, then I'm unequivocally better than him. So, I've got a lot to prove here. I'm like, right, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's defeat the troll. And here he comes up with an interesting excuse. He says, I went and fed my dogs mid-game because you were ass. And it backfired. And I don't know, guys. You can be the judge of that last battle. Was there a point when he could have got up, fed the dogs, and come back? I don't think so. I think he was constantly getting the, the hooks, uh, making units, uh, teleporting. You know, he, there was no point in there where there was five minutes of downtime for him. It, it's just one of those terrible excuses where I just say, oh, okay, that must be a skill issue then. Because <laughs> it's, it's so obvious that it's just a lie. And he's just trying to be like, oh, save face. So at this point, I know I'm dealing with a very salty player. So it just gives me more, more, you know, ammunition. I'm like, right, okay, okay then. You want to you wanna play that game? Let's go, let's go. So I'm quite uh, interested that he's going for, he hasn't went for the middle. Allow me to gather resources while I go and uh, go and face him. And one thing I never do, again, this is a strategy, like with the last one that I never do, uh, as the first in both games, I decide to go for honor guards, because what's the worst thing he can do is beam it down, right? He's not going to have jackals. And I'm like, what's Show he doing? What's where? he doing? Okay, his prophet's not here. And he's where not coming for me. I, sir, Let's have a look. Is he going now. for his hook? Because yes. I know there's resources here. And no, no, they're still there. So I'm like, okay, where? I have no idea where his prophet is. But that's good for me. Because I can just, you know, take out his stuff. And he starts to get a turret. Um, I don't know if I see that just yet. Yes, I do. And I'm coming over there to destroy it. And I'm faced with an interesting situation. Like, do I go for even more honor guards, seeing an undefended base? Or do I try and uh, and do something else? So here we go. Here, here come the honor guards. Does he make it? I think it... Does it get made? No, it doesn't. Okay, so that's 250 resources gone from him. So that's brilliant. And he has his ghost just attack my building. And that ghost stays there for ages. Just, you know, pewing down my building. So the best thing for me to do is to just attack his heavy supply pads. Not the little ones, the heavy one, because that's 325 resources gone if I take that out. And I keep on committing to this. I think, you know what? I probably could have upgraded my beam, and that would have helped me in the long run, but the damage that they output... And at this point, I'm, I don't know what I was checking for there. I'm, I think I'm trying to see where he is. I'm trying to see if he's getting points. Is he getting... Uh, a hook? I don't know. But either way, that's probably a bad trade-off for me, but I just don't want him to get anything. So now, he's only got two supply pads, and I'm on four supply pads. So in, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, we're doing great here. He's not got his hook. I'm taking on his stuff. He's probably a little bit worried now. And here he comes. He's back now. And he starts beaming my elite honor guards. But I notice that the beam doesn't last too long. So that's when I realized, oh my god, he's really low on resources then. This is brilliant. I'll keep on dropping them in. If, if he can't even beam down the stuff, and here I am, I can. He's basically only got one supply pad now. This is brilliant. More honor guards. And just take down that last one. And I think, okay, I could take down the last one or I could kill him. I saw it. Kill him. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think the Prophet is a little bit quicker than elite honor guards. But they do a hefty amount of damage to him. Each slice does loads. There you go. And we start taking the health off. Brilliant. Still dropping them in. A bit worried about the uh, the turrets. 
And I don't really have enough resources to take on the turrets, to take on him. I just want to get him away. I want to move him away, keep his shield from regenerating. And now I'm doing the push and I'm starting to upgrade my supply pad. And I'm thinking, wow, really that easy? He, he, he didn't want to rush or, or do anything? Nope. Okay, cool. I'll just keep on upgrading. And then I realized that ghost has kind of been killing my supply pad all the time. There we go. So I've killed one, two, three supply pads at the moment. And this will be the fourth. So that's a lot of resources. Uh, and then I think I realize now, oh God, I know what's happened here. He's He's got my hook. That's where he was. So the turret is after me. And I do some amazing uh, micro here. I know one more shot, I'm dead. I go left and I turn right. So the turret misses. And then I do it again. Oh, the turret misses. And then I do it again. Oh, the turret misses. <laughs> and then it does get me. And I'm like, oh, come on, go, go, go. And he just kills me there. Just kills me. But I do get another supply pad. So not looking too bad. He's, yes, he's got his hook. Oh, sorry, my hook. But at the same time, I've got two heavy supply pads right now. Ah, killer's ghost. Try to kill him, and he teleports back. So it's another hundred resources wasted. And I still have two honor guards. So I can keep up somewhat of a pressure on him. And now, I decide to do the thing that most covenants do. Um, and that is just go for double banshee. Double Banshee Pump. At this point, even if he does have my hook, I'm thinking he's not going to have enough resources to, you know, have vampires. Just a thousand resources to uh, age up. Then he's got to spend 200, is it? Or oh, no, 400 resources to get the Stasis Drain and then 250 each for vampires. So I think to myself, I just go for boost Banshees. Will be great. I do have all my heavy supply Enemy pads. Engagement. We're looking great. And I'm, you know, my uh, my honor guard's starting to get a little bit extra, a little bit cheeky resources. And now it's time. I know that he's wasting his time to get supply pads and I'm getting my summit at the same time. Like he's not getting anything. He's just trying to rebuild his economy. Summit complete. And while he's doing that, I can get banshees. But guys, this Whew, I was sweating so much last night <laughs> when I was playing this. I was like, this has the potential to be amazing if I can beat him. I realize his strategy has just been go for hooks on each map. Like, he relies on those hooks to win. Boost research. And then I realize, oh god, I'm not getting badges. Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> so as long as I can get these badges up, he doesn't put a shield on his base. I think we got this. I think we got this. I know. Who do you think's winning at the moment? I feel like I'm winning. I'm keeping an eye on what he's doing. And I see he's taken uh, that hook as well. But at the same time, it's not a matter of who's getting the most resources right now. It's who's getting the most military the fastest. That's the way I see it. Because I could have 20,000 resources right now. But if I can't, you know, make Banshees any faster than I'm making them right now. There's no point. So I know that, yes, he's got the hooks and I guess maybe it's going to help him. But right now, this is the fastest. This is the best he can do. Or I can do. So I'm just switching between summits, making sure that I am making them as quickly as possible because that's all I rely on right now. I don't know my profit. I have only got Banshees. My strategy is as soon as they're not double pumping anymore and one sat idle, I'll release them, I'll fly over, and I'll just take out, you know, whatever he has. If he has a summit, destroy that. If he has a hall, destroy that. And at the moment, still, this far in, and I'm still double pumping them. And it's about here where I, I realize I'm not going to get enough here. So, yep, there you go. Double pump has stopped. And I think I have nine? Nine banshees? And there we go. Oh, eight, eight banshees. So they zoom off. And let's just see. I, I notice. Oh, okay. And he has one turret. But here we go. Oh, and it's just been upgraded to a heavy supply pad. But I think I decide to take down the turret. And yeah, he is not going to be happy with those. So that turret's almost dead. 
We'll see if there's a turret being made over here, which there isn't, so that's good. And now I've got a micro. I've got to kite his profit around his base so he can't beat me. There you go. Because he's super slow, which is great for me. And just try and take down his supply pipes. We've got another one going over here. If I can try and split my batches, you can't be in two places at once. And there you go. Boom. Another building gone. Keep the production up. So it's all a matter of finding out where his profit is. I know that other turret's coming up, but I just want to kill his eco. I don't think I can get over there in enough time for... Ah, uh, it's unfortunate it's made. I'm like, damn. So again, back. Back over here. Try and get his made. I, I don't know where his profit is. Like, oh! What, what, where did, oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm like, oh god, go back! Run, 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 run! Oh, oh, it's so stressful! So now it is... It is me versus a prophet with a beam that is basically unstoppable because he has so Local much supplies. And I've just got to keep moving. Maybe I could have focused down his main. I don't know. I just wanted to, you know, if I... if I, And then I see him. He's beaming. But he's actually doing damage to his own buildings by beaming. I'm like, yes! Kill your stuff! <laughs> I think he realizes that as well. Of course, he's doing damage to his building, which means that he's doing uh, less damage to my banshees at the same time. And I see he's he's struggling now. He's like, oh God, I need shield. So yes, he has the hooks, but now he's two supply pads down. So I feel like it's even. Although, saying that, he's that's 200 gone as well with that destroyed. He's getting a lot of jackals. All I'm doing is either losing or keeping the same amount of banshees at this point. And he's getting Local turrets, units. so his base is, you know, slowly Local getting stronger. Units. I think I realize here it's it's Local it's units. not going as well as I thought. I just need to keep this shield off. That's another 200 gone. Local units. Yep, another 200 gone. And I, I just don't have the production for the banshees to keep this up. I, I start to Local feel units. the win slipping away. It's not good. I just want to destroy that. You know, destroy your supplies. Yes, it's gone. It's gone. Okay, the shield. Can we get the shield down? That's all. Be another two new resources out of it if we could do this. So that's the turret gone. The shield gone. We can get this turret gone. But hundreds of resources just disappearing from him. But. That's not what I'm worried about. What I am worried about Local is units. these jackals that are now amassing and basically acting as a turret. Local unit. So, oh, oh god, Local he's only got one supply pad now. I've successfully, completely torn to shreds his economy on his main base. He has literally nothing. And he has Local one supply units. pad, a temple, and a hall. But I'm just Local so units. dangerously low. So dangerously low here. And I know he has the hooks. So even though I destroy the supply units. pads, it's not going to hinder him too much. I mean, and this Local is it. Units. I decide I've, I've got to switch. I've got to switch tactic. I can't. I can't keep doing this. So I decide if there's one way to do it, Local I've got to beat him at his own game. I've got to go infantry and I've got to get my hooks. So All units. And I was quite tempted at this point to resign. My, my strategy had failed. He's got a mass of jackals. I don't have a profit. He's only going to get stronger from here on out. And it's not looking good for me. But at the same time, guys, I have that little message in my head he sent to me. Calling me terrible. And I can't let my pride. Go I, I can't. You call me crap. No, I can't be crap. I must get him. The thing is, I've I've made mistakes in this in this strategy and the last one, the last uh, game, and I know that he's not the best player in the world. I'm not the best player in the world, but I can't be beaten by him. <laughs> I, I I can't. You cannot win. So there we go. I'm like, okay, right. He's down, you know, loads of supply pads, and not only that, he's also down a hook. So this is great for me. I, oh, and I go, oh my god! <laughs> and I think, does he got a shield? He'll have a shield, right? Yep, yep, he has a shield. Cool. Thought, thought as much. And he does the only thing that he should be doing, and that is beaming down my balls, because that's my production. 
but at this point, I realized that I've just got to save. And my strategy here, with all of these jackals, because I, I can't really do anything, is to just get my profit back, upgrade my profit. I'm in a dire situation, guys, here. Really bad. But I, I don't think it's over. I feel like if I get my profit back, I upgrade my beam, I upgrade my profit. As soon as he comes out, when his attention is distracted, just beam down like a one, two, three, four, five. You know, because jackals die so quick, especially with only um, defense gauntlet. They don't have beam rifle. So my prophet has a chance of surviving when he's outside. Local unit. And I don't mind him beaming down my warehouse if he wants to. That's fine with him. Or fine with me, I should say. Local and there we go. He's lost Local both hooks. Units. And he's going to be feeling that now. Especially if he's having to make back his own economy and he spent basically everything on jackals. And because I have the economy, um, I can units. just give him fodder. Be like, there's a way, waste there. And I realized that he sent jackals off to get this back. And unfortunately, I only realized that a bit too late. So I think at this point, I'm like, I'm going to have to upgrade my profit if it... If it's going to stand Local a chance of surviving units. at all, I need that profit to be upgraded. Especially Enemy against engaged. all of those guys. So he's going to be feeling really good Local for himself. Units. His base is highly defended. I realize, oh crap, I can't go get it now because I'm just going to go in front of this base and die. Yeah, I'm We're thinking it's not looking good. I'm going to have to go for some turrets at the back. He sees that, comes to the back. I go, oh, cancel it, do the other side. And what's really good for me here is that he's splitting up his profit from his jackals. Then he goes, he's just destroying my eco. Luckily, I'm going to get that back, I think. I'm going to give up my hook. I might have one jackal. Oh, no, I don't. Never mind. And he's wasting a lot of resources. Does go for that turret. He finally sees it. And here we go. He's going to be at the back. He's going to be distracted, destroying the warehouse. Straight out. And I'm like, where's my profit? Where's Prophet? Where's Prophet? Enemy oh, there's Prophet! Yes! He's away! Sweet! I didn't want him in the middle. Here we go. This is it. This is the strap. This is the strap. Just beam them all down. I've got the resources. Just beam them. It's like 100, 200. Every, every time one drops, that's great. If this is beam rifle, I'd be dead now. But he didn't upgrade. So I'm like, oh, 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 oh. And I see he's beaming me. And I'm like, let's get out of here. There we go. Okay. Oh, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Oh. So he just lost his entire uh, military there. I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay, I'm I'm in with a chance now. I'm actually in with a chance. Uh, I put a jackal in there, and I do something stupid here, guys. I do something so stupid. I put him back, not realizing that the jackals were there. And I go, no. Oh, right. Well, we got to go my man. <laughs> so I don't know where his profit went. Oh, yep. Back in my base. And now I need to be in a better Local situation units. to defend this because, yes, I can get back stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, if he's just got jackals, maybe a good strategy could be wraiths. Warehouse complete. I don't know about you guys. Have you seen a 1v1 be this intense and this backwards and forwards? Because I haven't. I feel like I'm doing the best I can here. <laughs> I feel like this isn't new plays. But it's all, maybe it's also not amazing strat plays either. And I think, okay, yep. His jackals are undefended. Let's just slowly pick these guys off. With my banshees. Beam rifle would be something to be worried about. But again, just defense gauntlet. I think if you have the chance. And I see he's coming over. So get away. I do lose one. But that's all right. Factory. And there we go. Factory built. Brilliant. Brilliant. Shield. Let's go. Let's get some rates. Local that units. way I can shoot and then, you know, switch in and out. So he takes down another heavy supply pad, but I do have my hook. And he comes over. Local Bit units. worried about that. But as long as, like, that's 100 resources gone. Every jackal is a victory here. Another 100. And my profit's back, which is great. And unfortunately, Local he units. does not want me to get out any of those. Research. But his military is so weak and he's so Local distracted units. now when he's beaming, he's probably not getting more jackals. Warehouse complete. And yeah, I'm, I'm starting to win back this fight on my base. I don't have military, but I'm starting to make it back. And now I just need to try and Local kill units. or force his profit away so I can get my economy back up and going. This is this is so intense, guys. Like, I was 
I was, I was thinking I was winning at the start. Then I thought I'm losing now. And I see hunters come in without any shield. No upgrades. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, was that just in case I had some uh, raids? Possibly. And there we go. I'm like, okay, shield's lower than mine. Just force them. Force them away. For, like, beam them. Get them away. Get my economy up. Local unit. And he disappears. Waiting. And I can breathe a sigh of relief. Now, chances are, he's Local gonna come unit. over to me and just kill me. Like, he's gonna go straight back and beam down those warehouses so I don't upgrade those. And I think to myself, I'll take the second base, or at least I'll get the resources for it, because there's a lot of resources over here, and I need every bit. And stupidly, I put my banshees out first. And I, I'm keeping an eye on his score now, so I'll know if he goes for his base. So I've even the turret. At this point, I, I, I probably waste more resources beaming every unit down than I get back. But at this point, I think I need the moral victory. <laughs> I'm like, now, nah, just die. Yeah, and I see he's starting to take his base too. I'm like, oh, for God's sake, of course he is. So I do all that for 180 resources, which probably wasn't worth it. So I need to see what he's going for. Because I could go for anything at this point. I don't have any, uh, any building. Warehouse and upgraded. I have my shield. That's my focus was just to get what that protected. At least it's going to buy me time. And I decide to go for Summit, I think. And I'm, I'm killing that building. And I realize he doesn't... He hasn't got his killed yet. So if I can get an expo before him, if he decides to go down that route, that's great. And because I've got a shield, I can upgrade those Ready warehouses. So that's really going to help me. And now let's see what he's Local going for. Units. Let's have a look. And it's a Summit. It's not only one summit, it's a double summit. So I realize that his temple also isn't upgraded. So he's going for banshees. So I take this opportunity to, with my extra resources that I haven't been putting into my beam, I haven't been putting into a million jackals, to go for vampires. He's probably going to have the numbers above me. But if I can just get the va like enough vampires up to stasis those, uh, those banshees, render them useless then I could win this. And then I hear the base go. So he's going to get extra resources. And I don't think I can double pump vampires, but I'm going to try my best here. So to stop him getting his expo, I say my banshees round the side, which is probably where his profit won't be, just to keep an eye in case he gets it, just to like dump three fuel rods into it. You know, absorb, like make him waste as much resources as possible. Oh, and I can finally get a breather here. Oh, this be this be so intense. Watching it's intense. Good God, uh, is it intense for you guys? It's intense for me. And now he can get his base, but he's not getting it. If he did decide to get the expo, I think I probably would have won quicker. But now I'm starting to get the vamps. Starting to get the vamps. Enemy engagement. And I see his prophet coming. He just came straight towards me. And there's the banshees. So one, two, three, four, five, six banshees possibly. And I have no vampires at the moment. So I, I am going to have to let this go. I'm going to have to let my extra supply hook go. But hold it for as long as possible. Unupgraded jackal though. Did very well. And this is it. I've, I've just got to. I've just got to keep the population of vampires coming Vampire as fast prepared. as I can. I am kind of double pumping at the moment, though. Ready. Which is good. There we go. And his Local badges come units. over to check to see if I've got my expo, which again is a good strategy. And he has so Local. many banshees. I'm starting to think, like, is this going to be a losing game? Local units. Like, should I have went for turrets? Should I? If I'd went for banshees, I, I would have been screwed here. Vampire Here's the banshee lead. Prepared. And here they come. Two from that side. And then the rest is just going to slowly make their way from the left, Local I think. Units. And I don't know what I what I can do here. I've just got to... I've got to hope that my shield has going to hold off for as long as possible. Because if I didn't have my shield, I wouldn't be get this extra vampire out at this point. And he probably would have just killed me straight away. He knew my shield was there. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five... Six, I think? Six? One, two, three. Yep, six vampires. And he's got like 15 banshees. 
So here we go. This is the play. Stasis drain the, the uh, Banshees. Beam them as well, because they can't do anything. So he's basically down four Banshees. Here we go. Just, just micro the beam as much as possible. He starts beaming down my summit, which is, I guess, a good idea, but I got two of them, so he needs to get both of them. And I think I stasis more. And beam down again. Not hitting my shield generator. Do as much as I can. And he's got a two-star profit at this point. And I know he's coming around to attack my, my vampire, so I get out of there. And he has lost so many Banshees now. He only has two. <laughs> he only has two. My summits go down. But that, as long as I've got the uh, resources, that's what matters. Another one goes... So he had like 15 or 16 Banshees. He's got zero now. And I've got seven Vampires. And I'm so glad I did this. Because if I went for Banshees, that would be it. I'd be done now. So all I need to do is get him away. And I can fly over. And I can, you know, take down his shield even more. So he's focusing down, wasting resources, I think, anyway. Taking that. And just as soon as his shield goes down, he decides... Oh, he takes that one vampire and then he decides to go. It's like, okay, I killed one. Yeah, suck it. And I should have thought about this sooner. I should have had my prophet already over there. But I only thought about that last minute because I didn't think I was going to win that exchange. So now, oh I feel like the, the shoes are the other foot. Yes, he has a shield generator, he has turrets, and he has a two-star Prophet, but I've got the anti-air lead on him. Enemy and literally that second, he does the unthinkable, and he deletes his own shield generator. And I think, oh All my units. god, what? Wow. He did not expect me to push. He did not expect it. His strategy was literally to... You know, hide back, of course. get vampire lead. That was his strategy. And I'm like, no way. No way did I get that lucky. Because if he hadn't destroyed it, I would have been great there, but I don't know. So he's upgraded to the next age. He spent a thousand resources. His two star prophet is almost dead. Kill the vampire, kill the prophet. And now it's the base. And he resigns. And wow. What a game. That was so intense. And he leaves straight away. He's like, ah! <laughs> he just can't take it. And he leaves. So, wow, I think that was the best I've played in a long time. I was winning at the start, losing midway, and then losing again when he came with all his jackals and banshees. But then the counter with the vampires. There was so much in that game. It was so intense, so backwards and forwards, and eventually won it, and uh, we didn't get to uh, trash talk him at all, which is such a shame. But hey-ho, I just want to put that out because that was so intense, it was so freaking good. Oh my god, maybe I'm going to call this the, the closest games I've ever had, or at least the second one was. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed that video, leave a like, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye-bye.